Today is December 12th, 2015. Joining us on the porch is Annie Taggart. That's right, friends. You're back for another exciting episode of On the Porch Radio Hour. And we have exciting news. Not only do we have viewers in New York State, not only do we have viewers down the East Coast and out into the Midwest and out to the West Coast, up into Canada, but we've learned recently that we have listeners as far as the UK. And now, adding to our stream... Latvia. That's right, we have listeners in Latvia, and you wonder, how did we find this out? On the Porch Radio Hour, as some of you know, is slightly funded through a grant that we got earlier last year, and with that grant money, we were able to pay several anonymous On the Porch staff members to go through the CIA training. And uh, we, I mean, those anonymous on the porch staff members have spent some time in D.C. and now around the world doing some pretty high level government hush hush types of things. And well, I, I mean, well, one of our anonymous staff members was traveling Europe. I stopped, they stopped in Latvia, really just stopping there to meet a friend when they were doing their government computer type things, they noticed that there were people listening to On the Porch Radio Hour not far from where that anonymous person was. So that person packed up my st- his st- their stuff and followed the computer signal all the way to one of those awesome Latvian unpronounceable towns. Which is where I, he, they found Annie Taggart. Annie Taggart is a friend to On the Porch Radio Hour and the Wooden Apple Farmstead. And she'll be living with us for quite some time. Now that she's hiding from the Latvian government. But we'll get into that during her interview. Shoot, they're listening to this, aren't they, in Latvia? They're going to know. We'll edit that out. So we're going to be welcoming... Annie Taggart to the show and we're going to be welcoming all of those Latvian UK, West Coast Canadian Midwest, East Coast New York State listeners so thanks for being here thanks for listening thanks for watching on Concert Window and thanks for being a friend to On the Porch so we'll be talking to Annie Taggart in a little while but until then, Gina Holesopple, you're on the porch. Everything I have done And I have been told I'm an old soul Cause that is what I have become And I am a gypsy I travel the world I've been learning this dance Since I was a little girl I will wrap around you wind and if you want me I'll be with you again but all I need for you to do is love me for being a gypsy
Some days I can feel the hours Crawling across my skin Like I am waiting for time To brush me off And wanting to feel like myself again Cause I am a gypsy I travel the world I've been learning this dance since I was a little girl, I will wrap around you like the wind. And if you want me, I'll be with you again. But all I need for you to do is love me for being a gypsy. I have had friends who were my lovers and lovers who were my friends and I have felt certain and lost in a moment the moments are hard to defend and I am a gypsy I travel the world I've been learning this dance since I was a little girl I will wrap around you like the wind and if you want me I'll be with you again but all I need for you to do is love me for being cause I am a gypsy I travel the world I've been learning this dance since I was a little girl I will wrap around you like the wind and if you want me I'll be with you again but all I need for you to do is love me for being yes all I need for you to do is love me for being a gypsy raised in good old Fairport New York our friend our very, very good friend, Annie Taggart, has decided not only to join us for On the Porch Radio Hour, but to join us for life, really, for a, at least, you know, a, a, a while, which is pretty exciting. So welcome to the porch, Annie. Thanks. It's really great to be here. You bet. Welcome to the Wooden Apple Farmstead, too. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, are you finding um, that you're settling in okay? Yeah, it's been great. Good. Uh-huh. Good. Uh, how long now have you been back from Latvia? I came back right before Thanksgiving. Okay. And you left in at the end of June? The end of August. Oh, I'm sorry. At so the end I was of August. there for around three months. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, y- where were you staying while you were there? I was at an alternative family home, which is like, it ended up being an uh, orphanage, but not funded by the government. So it was a bunch of foster families living together. They call it Zvonnieko Mayas, which is like home of the bell, because they have this really beautiful bell that they have there on the property. Cool. I, uh, I while I was... Um I looked up some stuff on Google to see if I could find some pictures, and I found some really cool pictures of the bell. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really neat. And so what was your role while you were there then? You you weren't a foster parent. No, I was a volunteer. Okay. So my role was kind of to be a good role model for the kids that were there and to spend time with them and give them positive input. Right. And uh, how, how was that received? It was super awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Was w- Did you find that there was a, a communication barrier at all? Um, no. Some of the kids were really great at like acting out what they wanted to say to me. Um, one kid should probably be a professional mime. Mm-hmm. He was great at it. And then they wanted to know what I was trying to say. So they would, they would like struggle along a little bit. Sure. Good for you, though. It was fun. That's really neat. So three months of, of that... Yeah, well, I'm starting to be able to speak a little bit of mm-hmm. the language, too, so that's fun. 
Cool. And so you think you'll go back at some point? Yeah, I would, I'm working on citizenship, actually, because my grandparents are originally from Latvia, so I can get citizenship more easily than someone else might be able to. Nice. And I'd like to spend a few years there if I can. Sure. Uh, were you able to visit any family then while you were there? I was able to visit my grandmother's friends. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool in the town where she was born. Nice. So that was pretty amazing. Yeah. How neat. W what would you say was one of the most um, striking memories that you have of the, for lack of a better term, like the, the surrounding environment, the countryside or the, or the city life or, or wherever you were living? Um, there was a really beautiful woodland right behind the house at Zvonniki and um, Latvia is famous for its birch trees mm -hmm. so there were these beautiful um, glades of right? is it a glade if it's birch trees I don't know it can be metaphorical if it's not so um, <laughs> so glades of birch trees with beautiful sun streaming in and like mm -hmm. edible mushrooms on the ground and it was just like this is from a fairy tale but it's right here how neat uh, do you know, do they tap the birch trees? I don't know. Okay. Um, I know they pick the mushrooms and eat them. You sure? Yeah. That's cool. Uh -huh. Good for you. Uh, so when you're not traveling the world and introducing On the Porch Radio Hour to the world, uh, what, do, what do you do? What are you doing? Um, I really love art. I'm a doll maker, and mm. I also do other handcrafts and art. Nice. Uh, you've actually made a couple of dolls that now live here at the farmstead yeah right you made um you made some for ruby and lily yeah i love to give my dolls homes where i know that there will be love for them so mm -hmm. this is a great place for them to be <laughs> yeah they get a lot of love here it's uh -huh. pretty awesome uh one of the things i'd like to do actually is take a picture of of the dolls that you've made um uh, and post them into the slideshow during this during a part of your interview so people can see them would that be all right yeah that sounds great that would be awesome well, so probably while we're talking you're looking at what, some of these really cool dolls cool yeah right now <laughs> right so yeah. okay so now they'll be up for a little while boy they look neat don't they <laughs> they look they sure do look good <laughs> so you're working on dual citizenship you're yep. working on learning the language yep uh what do you what do you, uh, and and you're making dolls yes uh what are you, so are you making dolls then for um for a living while you're here in the states and working on all of that other stuff um hopefully it will be part of my living i'm still trying to figure out like what i'm going to do as a job or mm -hmm. like for my living but it's definitely a piece of what i'm doing yeah sure cool i think it's really great uh that you you just graduated last spring yep right in 2015 high school, yep. yeah uh, right graduated high school in 2015 mm -hmm. uh and you decided you wanted to travel and kind of get some life experience before you decided what you wanted to do yeah i wasn't sure what i wanted to do but i knew that i wanted to have great experiences with great people and become more wise and learn things so i decided to go to places where i thought i could accomplish those goals yeah and uh, so it hasn't been a full year yet, but how do you think it's going? It's going really well. I learned a ton in Latvia and now I'm here, so yeah. it's going to be great. It is great so far. It's It's been very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie and I had a really awesome experience recently, um, you know, celebrating a day and mm -hmm. we made cookie dough, which yeah, was, was really great. cool, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And that was, that was a ton of fun. Yeah, that was great. For our listeners, Annie, can you... Describe to them or explain how it is that you came to learn about the Wooden Apple Farmstead. What's your connection? Okay, so um, I have been going to a camp that you used to be, you and Gina used to be the directors of mm -hmm. for many, many years. Um, I think longer than you were there, actually. Um, Cause it yes, you were yeah, there longer than yeah, we were. Um, and so I got to experience the beautiful change and wonderful growth that happened in that camp um, while they were directors both to the camp and to me. So um, that's kind of how we met. And then I also was fortunate enough to be a staff member mm -hmm. at that camp um, while you were still the directors. And that was another amazing life-shaping, forming, learning experience. Yeah. Um, um, 
that's when we really became friends too and yeah. i got to i got to watch your kids for a couple of weeks that's right be the special ruby and lily counselor so <laughs> yeah that was awesome that was awesome for uh-huh. everybody involved i think <laughs> it was it was very cool yeah uh so so yeah so it was kind of a like a no-brainer for us when you said you know i have to do a, it was an internship yeah, you were doing uh-huh. i had to do an internship um all the people at the school the high school i go to have to do a senior internship or a senior project before they graduate for three weeks um and so i asked if i could do my internship here at the farmstead and you guys said yes and yeah. that was awesome that was awesome and i uh unfortunately it was during my time that uh, well at least part of it was during my time that i was in utah yeah uh and you had some really cool experiences while i was gone because we had goats having kids yeah that was amazing yeah and Mm -hmm. one of one of those days you were here by yourself is that right um yeah that happened the day i left i think um there there were kids that were born while i was here by myself yeah that's yeah, really neat. That was cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm sure there's probably not a lot of students that were seniors this, you know, in 2015 that could in their internship or their project say, "Well, I was there when, you know, the goats were having kids." Yeah, I know some people were like, "You're so lucky. I was folding towels at a gym the whole time." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, "Poor you, or organizing file paperwork." And, right. And, yeah. Yeah. And so that's I uh, the reason I'm kind of pounding that point is because I feel like it's very symbolic of your journey like you're you're kind of stepping out and challenging yourself and taking risks and it's it's proving to to be working really well for you and it's it's exciting to watch thanks yeah sometimes I get a little bit nervous about like doing the less traveled road but Mm -hmm. it, it it always I don't know I always feel like I'm doing my best and I'm at my best when I do what I'm supposed to do and not what other people say I'm supposed to do. That's right. That's right. Uh, And speaking of doing what you're supposed to be doing, and this might be some of my own baggage that I'm putting into this because I think it's fantastic and I think you should be doing it. Uh, But you've made a really cool connection with a, with a doll maker and you are, you're making clothes, right? Not the dolls themselves, but you're making. Yep. Um, I'm part of a developer program right now where I can make clothes for a doll before he comes out. And then when he is released in mass production, um, hopefully my, um, Etsy store handle will be on his website and people will be able to see that. So that's really cool. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And so you have your own Etsy store right now? I'm working on it. I have, I have it. I think I need to set it up still. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Good for you. So you're really, I I think you're taking some really awesome measured steps in, in putting things into place and kind of making it solid and, and making it work. That's the plan and the hope. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. Uh Cool. And, and, uh, I know it's kind of up in the air for you, but so I'm gonna, um, but I'm I, uh, so I'm gonna bring it up anyway. But uh, okay. so, you know, you have potential to be at camp again yeah, this summer. Yeah, uh huh. I I don't know yet um, mm-hmm. what I'm gonna do. I'm I would love to spend some time at camp. There are some other things that I absolutely have to get done. Um, like I would love to be better at. Latvian the language Mm -hmm. um, and there's a course that's over the summer so if I wouldn't be able to make it to camp because it's six the course is six weeks long so I don't know what I'm going to be doing in the summer but I would love to spend time at camp it would be my 15th year at camp this year so 15 years (laughs) yeah that's incredible yeah good for you Uh good for you so as we you've been here for about a week now almost a week Mm -hmm. right you came on on monday uh you're getting settled in mm-hmm. you're you're you've made goals yeah i spent all of yes was it just yesterday making yeah. goals that was awesome that's really cool and mm-hmm. and i i feel like you're really finding a good um a good groove here and a good place and mm-hmm. it's really exciting so as we move on through the next few months um you know we might be kind of throwing out little tidbits about what Annie's doing at the Wooden Apple Farmstead. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. <laughs> that would be cool. Well, I want to thank you so much, not only for being on the porch, but for being at the Wooden Apple Farmstead and, and thinking of us as, as a place that you could learn and grow. And 
I know that you're doing some really exciting things for you and it's really exciting for us as well. So thanks for taking a few minutes to, to chat with us. And, and Thank you so much for being so accepting and open and supportive of me. Yeah, sure. Sure. And and I'm guessing that at, at several points throughout your stay here, we'll be giving you all sorts of different titles. So <laughs> for right now, you're just going to be the Annie Taggart. <laughs> okay. And, and then as we move on through different episodes of The Porch, we'll, I'm sure we'll be giving you different. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. I'm excited to find out what I'll become. Me too. <laughs> Me too. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the title of the week. That can be a whole, like, weekly installment. <laughs> that would be wicked fun. That's fun. Yeah, and now, Annie's title of the week, brought to you by... <laughs> that's That's, <fun>. that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Cool. cool. Yeah, oh, Jinx. <laughs> you owe me some pewter. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Nice. All right. Annie, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Can we get a uh, a good for you counter? Sure, put a little ticker on it. Yeah, like good for you counter, like a, a little bell goes off every time you say it. <laughs> <laughs> I've transitioned from awesome to good for you. Oh, you sure have whatever. It is awesome. It's really cool. That's what I, it's, I'm just talking, you know. <laughs> on the porch radio hour and the Annie Taggart are brought to you this week by. Pewter. Bright, attractive, extremely versatile Pewter has been making fine collectibles for centuries. Made by combining tin, the fourth most precious metal in use today, along with copper and antimony, Pewter is a wonderful way to celebrate life. From angels to mugs, dragons to gravy boats, pewter is decorating mantles and mashed potatoes in homes worldwide. When I'm entertaining, the first thing I reach for is the wine. And then I reach for the pewter serving dishes. One of my favorite things to do when raising a glass to friends is to look at my reflection in my pewter cup. What a fine sight. I can owe all of my good looks, good parties, and good friends to Pewter. Pewter, fine wares for better days. You're listening to On the Porch Radio Hour. We'll be back in a moment. This is what's happening in central New York. The Oswego Music Hall welcomes Joe Crookston to the national stage on January 9th and the Ruddy Well Band on January 23rd. Visit oswegomusichall.org for more information. The Art Association of Oswego is hosting an exhibit called God of Light, featuring artwork by the members of Truth Seekers, a local multi-denominational Christian art group. The God of Light show closes tomorrow. Regular gallery hours are from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturdays and from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Sundays. Call 315-216-6782 for more information. Friends of Oswego hosts Christmas caroling and jingle jam on December 23rd at 6 p.m. Groups will meet at Taste the World and then split off to go to assigned locations. An after party will be held at Bistro 197 with live music beginning at 7 p.m. The Colette Theatre and Conference Center hosts special screenings of Home Alone tonight at 6 p.m. To find out about other events at the theater or to purchase tickets, visit colettetheater.com or call 315-298-0007. The Oswego Players present The Best Christmas Pageant Ever, directed by Jennifer Snow. The show runs this weekend and next weekend. Visit oswegoplayers.org for more information. Rarely Done Productions presents Star Wars the Musical this weekend at Jazz Central in Syracuse. Call 315-546-3224 or visit rarelydone.org for more information. 
The CNY Arts Center is holding auditions for Susical Jr. on December 15th and 16th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Auditions are open to all youth ages 7 to 18. The Arts Center will also be hosting a New Year's Eve gala from 8 p.m. to midnight on December 31st. There will be live music from Gina Holsoppel, ballroom dancing lessons, desserts, and a silent auction. For more information about these, as well as other projects and events at the Arts Center, visit cnyartscenter.com. The Wooden Apple Farmstead hosts the fourth annual Hot Cocoa Contest on January 10th at 1 p.m. The winner will receive a t-shirt and the honor of having your cocoa recipe served at all Wooden Apple events in 2016. The Wooden Apple Farmstead is also the home of the Red Room Sessions, a time for songwriters, musicians, and anyone else who wants to build their musical skill and knowledge to get together. We share songs we are working on, bounce musical ideas off each other, and we usually have time to just play a little music. This is a supportive environment where all levels of songwriting and musical experience are welcome. The next session is January 31st at 6 p.m. For more information about Red Room Sessions, the Hot Cocoa Contest, or other events and projects, visit Wooden Apple Farmstead on Facebook or call 315-591-0711. Once again, the esteemed Gina Holsapple. I am singing in the rain just singing in the rain what a wonderful feeling i'm happy again i'm laughing at clouds so dark up above my heart and I'm ready for love let the stormy clouds chase everyone from this place come on with the rain I've a walk down this lane with a happy refrain just dancing and singing in the rain I'm singing in the rain just singing and in the rain what a glorious feeling I'm happy again I'm laughing at clouds so dark up above the sun's in my and I'm ready for love Let the stormy clouds Take every one from this place Come on with the rain I've a With a happy refrain Just dancing and singing in the rain Amelia Bravenage was not new to Tonkahogan, not at all. 
As a matter of fact, whenever she left Tonka Hogan, which wasn't very often, she was new to wherever she went. There was something, however, in the morning air that felt different. And as she walked through the streets, they seemed eerily silent, and there was a fog that wasn't something you saw in Tonka Hogan very often. There wasn't fog, especially this time of year. But it was thick. It wasn't as wet as she thought it would be, and it was thicker than it should be. And she carried on. She walked and didn't come across, really, any other people to speak of. She thought she caught glimpses of folks peering out of shop windows or maybe a, an upstairs apartment window. At one point, she thought she saw somebody on a roof with a giant brush cleaning out a chimney, but she couldn't be sure. It could have just been some form of smoke coming out of the chimney and, and in the fog looking like somebody standing there. Whether these were actually people or not, there was very little movement other than hers, and she walked the streets. She began to wonder why it wasn't cold, too. It seemed like it should be really wet and cold outside, but she wasn't feeling wet and cold at all. It was just thick, so thick that she she could see it glistening off of her blue coat and her shoes. The brown leather seemed to be much darker and soaked, and her feet were warm and dry. She decided that today was her day, her her day to be untouchable, her day to move through the thick, unnoticed, untouched, unbothered. She continued to walk until she left town. She just continued to walk. And as the sun grew higher in the sky, it didn't burn the fog away like it normally would. She remembered having conversations with friends and her grandparents on several other foggy days in the past when the sun would get really high in the sky and it was this perfect white orb just hovering in the thick. Nothing ever like this before. She picked up a branch that had blown out of a tree the night before and broke the smaller branches off of it and used it as a walking stick. Imagined herself with a long cape dragging behind her a, a large leather overcoat. She could hear it sliding effortlessly across the ground as she walked beating out a slow, strong rhythm with the staff that she was now walking with. Sturdy piece of maple that although it had just recently blown out of a tree, it was strong and, and dry, like it had broken off and maybe got hung up in the branches a little bit before it was blown out for her to use. She remembered conversations too about ancestors and their time of vision quests and meditation. She began to walk and beat out that rhythm with her staff, breathing, enjoying the rhythm, the slow breathing. As soon only the staff was touching the ground and her feet were walking an invisible staircase through this thick fog. That long leather overcoat no longer dragging but billowing behind her. Soon she just stopped beating the staff. There was nothing to beat it on. She was in the air now and that drum beat was still beating in the same rhythm. Finally, she looked down, and the staff was now being carried in her giant talons, and she looked out, and her wings 
were spread and beautiful. Although the sun was working hard to get through that fog, it was still glistening off her wet wings and she soared above Tonka Hogan. Now she circled back around and could see the lake below. She envisioned the stories of the history of Tonka Hogan. She envisioned that giant white swan. And as she watched that historical moment play out and the giant cat salmon come flying out of the water, she anticipated the fish's jump. She closed her wings and soared like a comet toward the lake. Her eyes and her talons, the only things she had open. And just as the cat salmon was ready to engulf the swan, she caught it and flew high above the lake, carrying it to another town, to another lake, and letting it go there. Wondering what will become of Tonka Hogan now. What will become of that story, of that history? What will become of her? And as she flew back home, she decided to perch on that chimney where she thought she saw the silhouette of a person cleaning it, that long brush. Nobody was nearby now, so she sat. And as the sun began to set, and that white glowing orb turned into an orange and a red carpet spreading out over her town, spreading out over her, the heat, the warmth that it still radiated, drying her feathers, turning them back into her leather coat, drying her shoes, warming the air as it blew through her hair. And as her last feathers changed back, she took one more deep breath, that warm liquid air, and she cried out, this is my home, this is my only home, this is the only sacred ground that I have ever known, and should I stray in the dark night alone, rock me goddess in the gentle arms of Eden. Rock me, goddess, in the gentle arms of Eden. And, once again, with the great support and help of our friend Annie Taggart, we have made it to the end of another episode of On the Porch Radio Hour. Yeah. I want to thank you for listening at Concert Window. And I want to thank you for being on our website. I want to thank everybody that's here in the house at the Wooden Apple Farmstead. Ow, ow. <laughs> and I want to thank Pewter for investing. So thanks, everyone. Thank you for investing. Thanks for being part of the On the Porch Radio Hour family. And thanks for joining us again next week. Until then, peace to your journey. Please pay attention to everything. All right. Hey.
On the Porch is a production of the Wood and Apple Farmstead with host and writer Matthew Wood. Our musical director is Gina Holsoppel. Our stage manager is Ray Monet. Our sound technician is Maxwell Wood. This week's show is recorded live at Wood and Apple Farmstead in Palermo, New York. This week's guest is Annie Taggart. Find information about past shows, being on the porch, and much more online at ontheporch.weebly.com.